Good evening, everyone. It's 7 p.m. by item 2 on the agenda, which are, is our gallery presentations. We have the uh, RDV 2007 Tall Ships. Who is making that presentation? Just hit your mics. State your names. Please. All right, my name is Amanda Mumberkett, and I'm the chair with Village on the Canal Association. I'm Jerry Gibson, uh, just a member of the St. Peter's and uh, work at the St. Peter's Marina. Okay. So um, we're just going to take you, run you through our plans for tall ships uh, this coming summer. Um, we're really excited to have been selected as one of the guest outports in this international sailing competition. And um, we're going to tell you all about it this evening. So, uh, tall ships are going to be arriving in St. Peter's, docking at the St. Peter's Canal for a period of three days from August 4th to August 6th this summer. So it comes uh, just at the end of Nicholas Denny's days, so we're wrap we've wrapped it up into that festival. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the international uh, race, the RDV 2017 has a whole guest ports program. The, the base port this year is uh, Quebec City, um, but we are fortunate in Nova Scotia to have quite a few um, guest ports where ships will be visiting. In this region, you'll see them arrive in both uh, St. Peter's and Port Hawkesbury. Um, so it is part of Canada's 150 celebrations. Uh, the whole RDV 2017 uh, goes from late June to the end of August 2017. There's an opportunity for vessels to visit 33 different Canadian ports um, between Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, PEI, and New Brunswick. And the idea was to provide the uh, ships and tourists with an, op with an opportunity to sample maritime heritage and different cultures. It is a really unique travel opportunity, and I think there's still spots on some of the legs for some of the boats if you wish to learn how to sail on a tall ship. So, <laughs> um, so the tall ships of no in Nova Scotia are being organized by the Waterfront Development Corporation based out of Halifax. The entire uh, festival internationally is the Tall Ships International Limited and Les Rendezvous Naval de Quebec organizing the regatta. Uh, but here we've been working with Waterfront Development based out of Halifax. Um, it's, they've been engaging the outports in a province-wide celebration. Um, they began, I think they did the announcement a couple weeks back yes. on which ports and the types of ships you would see in each port. Uh, Destination Cape Breton has been a big part of the organizing piece on this as well. Um, we're leveraging, trying to leverage the, uh, the maritime culture and heritage to have uh, an economic development impact in our communities, obviously. The more visitors that we can attract to the area, the better. I want to uh, introduce you now to the ships who will be visiting our port. We're really lucky to have three uh, major ships visiting this year. This is the Mist of Avalon from Toronto, Ontario. She will be in port with us uh, and is a length of 25.31 meters. The Mist of Avalon um, will accompany two other ships. The second being the St. Lawrence II from Kingston, Ontario at a length of 21.84 meters and the when and if from Key West, Florida, USA, with a length of 23.92 meters. So three really large ships in our, uh, in our port this coming summer, and they're going to make a great big impact at the National Historic Site at the St. Peter's Canal. As a guest port, um, we have uh, received funding from the Waterfront Development Corporation, so the county has signed a contract, which we are very appreciative of, of you, um, uh, being the applicant, uh, the, the project is obviously a lot larger than any of the <laughs> typical community festivals that we have undertaken in the past, and the county's participation was integral to us being able to successfully host this event. Um, it is integrated with a, uh, a couple of additional events, as I mentioned. Nicholas Denny's Days um, is July 31st to August 6th, 2017, and Swim the Canal uh, is happening on August 5th. So there will be swimmers in the canal with the tall ships and we can't wait to see what that's going to look like. <laughs> It'll be crowded in there. It's going to be great. <laughs> Um, so we'll just take you through a little a run through of our events. What we tried to do was incorporate as much of our uh, cultural assets as we possibly could. Um, we are going to start Friday, uh, August 4th with a village welcome 
uh, we have, uh, we're planning for traditional First Nations welcome. Um, we're looking at integrating a lot of children's activities into the program as well. Um, a pirate fun run for kids is one of the things that we will be doing. So obviously with the presence of tall ships in the port, it gives us an opportunity to cross promote with um, some of our other festivals, not just Nicholas Denny's Days, but the September Pirate Days Festival in St. Peter's as well. And the theme was just way too much for us to resist. We, uh, we're looking forward to having pirates on the tall ships for sure. <laughs> um, we are going to be also including on the Friday, uh, uh, the Chamber of Commerce is hosting a deck reception. We're going to have some sea shanties, which are live performances uh, of music from, of working sailors, which is going to be a really interesting, uh, interesting performance. Uh, a lot of that will be a cappella performance. Um, and then we're planning for a storytelling evening. We're calling it the Spiritual Night, where we would have campfires, traditional drummers, dancers. Um, the TP uh, from the park we're hoping to bring out into the forefront of the park where it's usually in with the uh, in with the RV sites and bring it to uh, bring it to the canal side and light it with the Canada 150 colors and of course lots of music on Saturday, uh, the 5th of August, we're looking at waking up the village with the traditional First Nation smudging ceremonies. We've got, um, a, again, on the, on the Saturday, we'll have all aboard the tall ships. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the decks will be open to the public for, I believe, a period of five, five, hours. five hours minimum. From Twelve to five. Yeah. Uh, so it gives the it gives the opportunity for people to just get on board the ships, look around, do their own exploring, that kind of thing. And we'll have programming canal side, um, all likely on both sides of the canal for that. Um, we're really looking forward to our Saturday evening. Um, I guess, event combination. Uh, it's both a festival meal and uh, we're calling the Docksiders Ball. So the, tr the meal will be a traditional meat pie that's held lockside out under the tents uh, by the canal. And we'll ha feature some storytelling and, and live entertainment with uh, Lewisburg Connections. Um, We've got the Docksiders Ball combined with that, where we'll have traditional folk music, lots of uh, really great sound that's reflective of our culture, and then topping that evening off with a display of fireworks. So that'll be a really dynamic uh, series of events for sure. And then for those who don't stay up too late on Saturday, we have a Village Sunrise fun uh, run that we do. Um, it's part of our regular suite of Nicholas Denny's activities, and this year we will uh, we'll theme it around the ships. Um, the decks, again, are open to the public. We'll have a uh, hodgepodge, hodgepodge, I can't say that, hodgepodge, hodgepodge. parish potluck, um, which will feature some of the best, uh, you know, homemade cooking of, uh, of the region. I'm really excited to be offering as well a trading post. Um, we've got an 18th century trading post planned for Canal Side. So as we kind of wrap up the events on the Saturday evening under the tents at the canal, we'll be cleaning that all up and opening the tents into a market um, the next the next day for most of the day. We've also got some tidal lock demos that we'll be doing um, and photography experiences uh, featuring Wallace McCaskill, of course. Um, and then if the, the small event, Swim the Canal, where I think we'll probably have upwards of 100 swimmers in the canal with those boats, um, will also occur that day. And we're looking at, to wrap things up um, on the Sunday, we're looking at doing a tall ship salute. So just to kind of recognize the fact that this is a historic event for Richmond County and, and uh, all the communities around, um, we'd like to really send these ships off in style. So we'd like, we're uh, organizing First Nations drummers, bagpipers, and um, I don't want to let any cats out of the bag, but I'm working on a cannon <laughs> to see if we can to see if we can have uh, some really loud noise and have ships accompany the tall ships out into the bay. I think it'll be a really great experience for visitors and residents alike. And to they have. will be leaving at six o'clock on Sunday evening. Yeah, no, <clears throat> evening at six, so the sun will be just you know still high enough in the sky that you could really enjoy that as part of the experience. And that wraps up our schedule. So a lot going on in those few days. I should mention there'd be a there'll be a parade, a themed a ship and pirate themed parade, on that <coughs> Sunday as well. But it won't be happening canal side. It'll be up more on the main street in St. Peter's. So, so some of the legacy and lessons. These are some great pictures. I don't know if you can see them well, but anyway. Um, these are some pictures from the Lewisburg 300 event that we had held a few years back. Um, it was 
a, set of, a similar set of events, but all the, obviously much smaller scale for us as a, as a community. Um, but you can see the, the presence of different cultures. You can see Sabine there holding the lobster. You know, she, we're hoping that, uh, that she might return with some of her friends. And uh, we're really looking forward to, you'll see on the bottom right, the market set up. Um, really looking forward to theming this in an 18th century style to capitalize on that, on that cultural piece. We have so much to offer. So. And that, or maybe I'll just mention a couple other of the legacy and lessons that we've been working on. Um, this Festival of Tall Ships is unlike anything that we've experienced in Richmond County in the past, I believe. The last time the Tall Ships visited, uh, the security requirements alone were, you know, they were not what they are today. And um, we've been learning about threat levels and <laughs> terrorism and things like that. Like, it's, it's a major ordeal uh, planning for this, and there's a minimum requirement of security for folks who volunteer in and around the ships themselves. They don't need to have this security training if they're work, you know, helping us with the dinner or p things that are not directly happening with the ships, but there is a requirement for training. The, the great thing about that is that it will be a, a legacy for us to be leaving of, of you know, knowledge-based building in our community. We're really looking forward to connecting as many students into that as possible as well so that they can gain that experience and knowledge about how to host an international festival. So there's a lot of community capacity building that's, that have been going on. And I really feel that it sets a precedent, and we talked about this, about putting Rich, Richmond County on an inter international stage. This is a major event. Um, with a lot of moving parts, and um, I'm excited to see the county has, you know, and, and the people in the county have stepped up to the plate for this. Um, we also uh, are still calling out for some volunteers. We have a few places where we could use some help, um, particularly with some of the children's activities um, and uh, security. Uh, we we're looking for um, a security people to help with a security station. Bags will need to be checked because they go in and out of the ships, that kind of thing sort of Disney World level security, so um, so we're looking for some helpers with that kind of thing. Um, all, all supplies and training provided, of course, and of course, anyone who is looking to help, um, you know, dress up, we're looking for lots of themed costumes in the, in the village that day, and frankly, I think that'll be the funnest part, so. <laughs> so I think that wraps it up. Does anybody have any questions? I went through that really quickly, I'm sure it's a lot of information, but... Any questions from council? Mr. Gayash? Uh, I guess it's not a question, but uh, uh, Gary Gibson, long time don't see, because last time I seen you, uh, you were in charge of the waterfront project in St. Peter's. Uh, yes, that was back in 98, I think. Was it that long? It's sure. been a few years, yes. Been a few years, but I, I think this is a great project, and it seems to me, you, is there funding available for that from Rendezvous, Quebec? Isn't that a part? parcel from... Uh, yeah, my understanding is the funding was channeled through Canadian Heritage to the Waterfront Development Corporation, and then we've signed a contract, uh, or the county has, with, with that organization, Waterfront Development. So there, any of the outport programming, the funding is being channeled through the Halifax Corporation. It is great. No, I think it's a wonderful project, and I commend your organization for going through this. It's very important, and it's uh, beneficial to all of Richmond County. Gary, it's good to see that you're still involved in the community. So. Can I can it be Jerry, not Gary? Uh, Gary. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I know what you mean now. <laughs> I, I apologize. Is that all, Councillor Gaius? Councillor Martel? Yeah, I guess to echo some of the comments that uh, Councillor Gaius is saying is that it's a very big project to over mm -hmm. to take uh, take into. Uh, in your hand, but it uh, seems like you've got it, most of it under control, so it's going to be really, like you say, uh, a great legacy and an asset for Richmond County. Uh, I mean, and on the heels of what's happening with the tourism and stuff, it's a great start to even to kind of put the feelers out there to see who will show up and how mm -hmm. it will work out. Uh, so uh, best of luck, and uh, it, it's great to see people involved in, in such a huge project. Thank you. Thank you. I do also want to mention, just very briefly on that note, uh, the reason that we have, we're feeling like we kind of have this under control, <laughs> is uh, we're feeling pretty confident about it. It's because of the way that people have stepped up. Uh, the private sector in particular, you know, have uh, begun to contribute time and resources um, to, the, to the effort, and that's everything from you know, gangways to whatever, you know. So it's, it's making a big difference in terms of our ability to pull this off. And I think they need to be recognized for that. So, yeah.
Councillor Boucher. Thank you, Warden Marshall. Well, first of all, let me commend uh, Jerry and uh, our guests here for uh, bringing us this presentation. The uh, tall ships has came a long way in, in the last few years, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of work being put in, and it's only right that the municipality support their effort in any way we can. So thank you very much, guys. That'll, that'll be money from your fund now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Deputy Warden? Um, just a question. You mentioned that there's three of the major ships coming. Any, like, Is there also a following of some smaller vessels, or is that sort of... Not into this port, as far as we know. Um, I have heard that there will be... There's still a chance yeah. of some ports receiving the fourth or fifth vessel, but that will not be out for another week or two from Halifax Waterfront Development. Uh, I put in a request for another ship, uh, but we uh, haven't heard anything yet. Yes. But is, is there like a local following, so just the... You know, I, I saw the tall ships in Halifax, but I'm just wondering. Yeah. So, and I know that's not the same thing. Obviously, yeah. you're talking about two different different ideas altogether there. But if the local sailors who are interested in sailing are they allowed to just kind of go out and bomb we're, around with these? We're people? hoping uh, that sailors no. will be on the water for the salute out yes, the bay. but there's also right. there's also a program that is out there for anybody that would like to be able to go on a tour with one of these boats. You have to put up your own money or get a sponsor from someplace. There's actually right now three of the boats that are coming to St. Peter's. One of them still have 10 crew members short coming from Quebec to uh, St. Peter's. And there's one of them has 12 members short on their boats right now. I got an email the other day. So they're trying to come up with ways to promote to get some extra youth involved into coming along. Or it doesn't have to be just youth. It could be somebody like Gilbert's age, like, you know, Okay. That can also go. <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> so if there but, are local people who are interested in sort of taking some of that stuff on, is there yes. a contact for it? Would it be... There's a... Uh, I don't have the web page. That uh, you could send them our way and then we, way. Can, yeah. we can yeah. forward them on. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. For sure. Uh, so you're saying this is at the end of Nicholas Days? Yes, Nicholas it is. Nicholas Days? Is that kind of... Have you extended to Nicholas Denny's days? No, no it was no, a okay. happy accident. Yeah. The, the, so, uh, are you removing some other programs from that? No, those events. No, no we've no. essentially okay. been able to integrate the activities of Nicholas Denny's days into this. You know, and there's very few things that'll be happening con concurrently because we wanted to create like a, a flow of ex you know of events for people. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So so far, it's worked out really well. We still have. I think until the end of May for people to submit ideas for Nicholas Denny's days. So we may see some overlap, but so far it's worked out really well. Yeah. Any more questions? Well, thank you, Amanda and Jerry, for your presentation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item three on the uh, agenda, the review of the minutes. You've all had in your package the uh, April 10th Committee of the Whole Minutes. Are there any questions, errors, omissions? It's been moved by Councillor Boucher that we approve the minutes as presented. Is there a seconder? It's been seconded by Councillor Martel. In discussion? Questions have been called. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carried on the item. For any items that anyone wants to add this evening? Yes, I have an item I'm trying to get it up. I'm trying to get it up here on my computer, but it's gone. Okay, well. No, just hit your mic. Okay, there you go. Okay. We have a request from the four uh, H Club to send a uh, a 4-H member to Camp Rankin for one week at a cost of $225 to the county. I'd like to make a motion to accept that request. Make that motion and items at it? Yes. You want to add that? Okay. Unanimous consent of council? Add that? Okay. Any, <coughs> any other items? Well, I'd like to add one, and it has to do with the travel expense policy. I have unanimous consent. Okay, so that'll be two items at it. Any other items? 
need a motion to accept the agenda as presented with the two items added. It's been moved by Councillor Martel, seconded by Councillor Boucher on discussion. Question has been called. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carried. On to item five on the agenda correspondence. CAO. Uh, thank you, Warden. Uh, we have uh, three items before Council uh, for discussion and decision. The first item is the Bredore Lake Biosphere Reserve Association. Uh, I've included in your uh, package uh, correspondence from Gordon Kerr. It's regards to the uh, Bredore Lake Biosphere Reserve Association. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, the uh, Bredore Lakes have had a prestigious uh, designation. Uh, our county borders on the Bredore Lakes and our watershed um, uh, feeds into the Bredore Lakes and it's a place where uh, we've strived to live sustainably with nature. There are eight members currently on the board uh, with three uh, terms coming to an end this fall. The association is requesting a director uh, to be representing Richmond County and because our district is within the boundary of the biosphere, uh, they felt it would be appropriate uh, that we uh, appoint a board member. So uh, the cost of uh, the board member will be just some uh, monthly travel, uh, mileage and that type of thing uh, for uh, meetings on a monthly basis throughout the year. So I'm asking council uh, for uh, appointment of a board member uh, to this particular association. Um, initially, this was sent. Um, <clears throat> the three councillors are uh, Deputy Warden, Councillor Bush, and, my, and myself, that our district's board, that biosphere. So that was sent to us, CC to uh, Councillor Gayesh and Councillor Martel. So if anyone wants to go on that, Warden? Yeah, I, I, I believe I did send an email back then and I don't know if I did get a response but my question was when the meetings actually did take place was it through the day thing or was it an evening thing uh, my impression is that these meetings take place throughout the day that's a good question if it's an evening commitment I certainly don't mind doing it but uh, if it's through the day I, I can't Maybe we'll wait and get back to you then. Is everyone okay with that? Yep. Okay. So we so will. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll do that. Then we'll, I'll have a motion for that then. Yeah, I will. It's been moved by uh, Councillor Gayash that uh, Deputy Ward McLean be appointed uh, on the Bedore Lakes Biosphere Reserve Association. Is there a seconder? Second. It's been seconded by Councillor Martel on discussion. Question. Question's been called. All those in favour signify by raising your right hand. Motion carried. Maris, item two. The uh, second item uh, for uh, council uh, direction and decision on involves the um, CDENE and request uh, to uh, nominate a board member. The name that was forwarded to this uh, organization was uh, James Grayesh, but I, I believe that um, Councillor Alvin Martel is, will be sitting on the board. So we just need to uh, verify that that's the case and uh, have a council resolution to authorize Alvin to be sitting on the board. Councilor Martel, are you okay with that? And Councilor Goyash? So should we have a motion to remove one and add another or just? Okay, so we'll word the motion this way that we're removing uh, Councilor Goyash as a board member of the C uh, or CD and we're appointing Councilor Martel. 
It's been moved by Councillor Gayash. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Boucher on discussion. Question has been called. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carried. On to item C. The uh, third item for Council is a request uh, for a grant for the St. Peter's Community uh, Club uh, Municipal District Infrastructure Fund, District 4, for $3,125. The uh, St. Peter's Community Club uh, function is to operate the Nicholas Denny Museum. The museum was opened in 1967. Uh, the museum is typically uh, funded by uh, yearly fundraising and donations at the door. And because the museum was built in 1967, uh, at this point in time it requires some major repairs. The request to the municipality is to assist in funding to replace the cedar shingles on the roof, including the fascia and soffit, as well as remove the top portion of the chimney, which is deteriorating. And then phase two is to build and install a frost wall and repair the uh, joists and beams uh, in the foundation of the building. The uh, Project. The first phase will be obviously the replacement of the uh, roof and the um, replacing the facade, fascia and soffit, uh, soffit, and the work is anticipated to be completed by the end of May, depending on funding availability. And the second phase will occur uh, and be completed in the fall of this year. The uh, project will take approximately 800 man hours. And because of the uh, re needed repairs on the building, there is a damage, potential of damage to the documents and affidavits that are in that building. The cost of the project is uh, estimated to be $63,927, uh, that being $42,327 in materials and $21,600 in labor costs. The financing for the project is uh, Stakeholder equity, $12,857. Uh, provincial contribution of 47945 And the municipality of uh, the county of Richmond is being asked for $3,125. Uh, the request uh, and application form has been uh, duly filled out. Uh, it also includes the uh, statement of income and expenditures for the uh, club, the balance sheet for the club, as well as its budget and documents of incorporation. So this uh, grant is ready for Council's approval. So do we have a motion? I move the, uh, Your mic. Your mic. I move the approval of the grant for the uh, St. Peter's Community Club. Uh, out of my district uh, activity fund, our addictive uh, infrastructure fund. Infrastructure. Case been moved by Councillor Boucher second. and seconded by Deputy Ward McLean that we take $3,125 out of District 4 infrastructure fund. On discussion, question has been called. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carried. On to uh, the items for information purposes, which is the list of checks. There's uh, some checks for the uh, water utility and some for the under the general. Uh, if there's any questions on that, you can forward that to myself or the CAO. Uh, moving on to item six, which is items added. Uh, Councillor Boucher. <coughs> yeah. Thank you, Warden. Um, the 4-H club has requested from the County of Richmond to place a 4-H club member in Camp Rankin for one week at a cost of $225. And I move its acceptance. Where are we finding that at? Just under the County General or you want to do this activity? Take it out of my activity fund. Okay, I think we probably have to go through an application for that. Yeah, we'll get an application okay. filled out for that. 
long as we have permission from council to do that. Yeah. When when do they want that? Sooner than later. Okay. We'll get that in. It'll be approved at the end of the month. Thank you. Okay. On to the second item added, and it's for myself. And what I want to say sure. is that. No, we don't think we need a motion. We'll have to wait for the activity grant to come in, and then we'll make a motion. Uh, on to the, my item. My item is that uh, I'm giving notice that I will introduce a motion at the next regular council meeting to amend Schedule A of the travel and expense policy to change Section 1.3, which is the vehicle use, from the provincial rate per kilometer to the average of the provincial and the federal rate per kilometer. We need a motion for that or anything, just giving notice. Uh, on to item 7, which is the 15 minute question period. If anyone has any questions on any items discussed this evening or anything else, please come up. Hi, I'm Jermaine McDonald from St. Peter's. Um, first, I guess I was remiss at the last meeting to not thank Council for all the positive changes that we've seen come about in the last few months. Um, being able to see the expenses online is a, is a very good thing and we're, you know, waiting for more positive change too, but I think uh, it's, it's been a good sign for the public. Um, Having said that, I guess my next question is uh, people are wondering about, um, you know, the RCMP investigation, if it's still ongoing, um, if we're going to be trying to collect monies that um, were said in the forensic audit that were uh, shouldn't have been spent, so we haven't been hearing anything on that of late, so I guess if somebody could speak to that, that would be great. Okay, the the money from Municipal Affairs, that question has been posed. Uh, we will wait. Uh, somewhat been posed to, we had some members from Municipal Affairs here this evening. Uh, we will be sending an email and we will wait for a response. Uh, we stated to them this evening exactly what our ask was. I think uh, there was some misunderstandings with the first ask. So that will be forthcoming. Uh, the RCMP investigation, where we are with that, is at the end of this month, a couple of us are going to be meeting with their forensic team, and we will decide at that point where we're going. They will uh, release to us what they've uncovered so far, and a decision will be made by a couple of us here, myself, the Deputy Ward, and CAO, uh, where, we, where we proceed from there. Okay. So we will let the public know at that point. And that includes a uh, collection of any monies that, if it's That will deemed. include uh, where they decide to go. Okay. Yeah, we will just tell them if they're going or not. Okay. They'll decide their direction based on the information. You'll decide if they go or not. They will decide. Oh, we'll okay. We'll decide if they're going or not. Great. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? No other questions? Okay, it's so a motion yeah. to go. Yes. Benjamin Murray. Oh, <coughs> your mic. Your mic. Okay, say your name ben again. Benjamin Murray from Mustard. Okay. I just heard what you just said that you're going to decide yes or no. The answer should be yes on that money. That was taxpayers' money that they took. And I don't care if it's only 60000 or 50000 It's still our money. And it should be a, re a, re a re return. It's not the answer or yes or no. The answer should be yes. And you better make sure that it's, it's a yes. Thank you. I guess we heard the ultimate. <laughs> Any other questions or comments, I guess? Okay. It's a motion to go in camera. Uh, we'll go in camera in five minutes or so. Okay. 